Act One of The Tragedy of Macbeth. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Tragedy of Macbeth by William Shakespeare. Act One, Scene One A Desert Place. Thunder and Lightning. Enter Three Witches. When shall we three meet again? In thunder, lightning, or in rain. When the hurly burly's done, when the battle's lost and won. That will be ere the set of sun. Where the place? Upon the heath. There to meet with Macbeth. I come, Gromalkin. Paddock calls. Anon. Fair, fair is foul, and, and foul is fair. fair. Hover through, through the, the fog and filthy air. Exeunt. Act One, Scene Two. A camp near Forest. Alarm within. Enter Duncan, Malcolm, Donald Bain, Lennox, with attendants, meeting a bleeding sergeant. What bloody man is that? He can report, as seemeth by his plight, of the revolt, the new estate. This is the sergeant who, like a good and hardy soldier, fought against my captivity. Hail, brave friend! Say to the king the knowledge of the broil as thou didst leave it. Doubtful it stood, as two spent swimmers that do cling together and choke their art. The merciless MacDonald, worthy to be a rebel, for to that the multiplying villainies of nature do swarm upon him, from the western isles of kerns and gallow glasses is supplied and fortune on his damned quarrel smiling showed like a rebel's whore but all's too weak for brave macbeth well he deserves that name disdaining fortune with his brandished steel which smoked with bloody execution like valor's minion carved out his passage till he faced the slave which ne'er shook hands nor bade farewell to him, till he unseamed him from the knave to the chaps, and fixed his head upon our battlements. O oh, valiant cousin, worthy gentleman! As whence the sun gins his reflection, shipwrecking storms and direful thunders break, so from that spring whence comfort seems to come, discomfort swells. Mark, King of Scotland, mark, no sooner justice had with valour armed compelled these skipping kerns to trust their heels, but the Norway and Lord, surveying vantage, with furbished arms and new supplies of men, began a fresh assault. Tis made not this our captains, Macbeth and Banquo. <laughs> yes, as sparrows, eagles, or the hare, the lion, if I so sooth, I must report. They were as cannons overcharged with double cracks, so they doubly redoubled strokes upon the foe. Except they meant to bathe in reeking wounds, or memorize another Golgotha, I cannot tell. But I am faint. My gashes cry for help. So will thy words become thee as thy wounds. They smack of honor both. Go, get him, surgeons. Exit Sergeant, attended. Who comes here? Enter Ross. The worthy Thane of Ross. What a haste looks through his eyes. So should he look, that seems to speak things strange. God save the king. Whence camest thou, worthy Thane? From Fife, great king, where the Norwayan banners flout the sky and fan our people cold. Norway himself, with terrible numbers, assisted by that most disloyal traitor, the Thane of Cawdor, began a dismal conflict, till that Bologna's bridegroom, lapped in proof, confronted him with self-comparisons, point against point, rebellious, arm against arm, curving his lavish spirit, and to conclude, the victory fell on us. Great happiness! That now Sveno, the Norway's king, craves composition. Nor would we deign him burial of his men till he disbursed at St. Colm's Inch ten thousand dollars to our general use. No more that Thane of Cawdor shall deceive our bosom interest. Go, pronounce his present death, and with his former title greet Macbeth. I'll see it done. 
What he hath lost, noble Macbeth hath won. Exeunt. Act One, Scene Three, A Heath near Forest. Thunder. Enter the three witches. Where hast thou been, sister? Killing swine. Sister, where thou? A sailor's wife had chestnuts in her lap, and munched and munched and munched. Give me, quoth I, a roint thee, witch, the rump-fed Runyon cries. Her husband's too Aleppo gone, master of the tiger. But in a sieve I'll thither sail, and like a rat without a tail, I'll do, I'll do, and I'll do. I'll give thee a wind. Thou art kind. And I another. I myself have all the other, and the very ports they blow. All the quarters that they know. I the shipman's card. I will drain him dry as hay. Sleep shall neither night nor day hang upon his penthouse lid. He shall live a man forbid. Where he seven nights nine times nine, shall he dwindle peak and pine. Though his bark cannot be lost, yet it shall be tempest-tossed. Look what I have. Show me, show me. Here I have a pilot's thumb. Wrecked his homeward, he did come. Drum within. A drum, a drum, Macbeth doth come. The, the weird, weird sisters, sisters hand, hand in hand, Posters of the sea and land. land. Thus to go about, about, Thrice, thrice to thine, and thrice to mine, And thrice, thrice again to make up nine. Peace, the charms wound up. Enter Macbeth and Banquo. So foul and fair a day I have not seen. How far is called to fours? What are these, so withered and so wild in their attire, That look not like the inhabitants of the earth, and yet are on't? Live you, or are you aught that man may question? You seem to understand me by each at once her chappy finger laying upon her skinny lips. You should be women, and yet your beards forbid me to interpret that you are so. Speak, if you can, what are you? All hail Macbeth, hail to thee, Thane of Glamis. All hail Macbeth, hail to thee, Thane of Cawdor. All hail Macbeth, thou shalt be king hereafter. Good sir, why do you start and seem to fear things that do sound so fair? In the name of truth, are ye fantastical, or that indeed which outwardly ye show? My noble partner you greet with present grace and great prediction of noble having and of royal hope, that he seems rapt with all. To me you speak not. If you can look into the seeds of time, and say which grain will grow and which will not, speak them to me, who neither beg nor fear your favours nor your hate. Hail. 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 Lesser than Macbeth, and greater. Not so happy, yet much happier. Thou shalt get kings, though thou be none. So I'll hail Macbeth and Banquo. Banquo and Macbeth, I'll hail. Stay, you imperfect speakers, tell me more. By Sinal's death I know I am Thane of Glamis. But how of Cotter? The Thane of Cotter lives, prosperous gentleman. And to be king stands not within the prospect of belief, no more than to be Cotter. Say from whence you owe this strange intelligence. Or why upon this blasted heath you stop our way with such prophetic greeting? Speak, I charge you. Witches vanish. The earth hath bubbles as the water has, and these are of them. Whither are they vanished? Into the air, and what seemed corporal melted as breath into the wind. Would they had stayed. Were such things here as we do speak about? Or have we eaten on the insane root that takes reason prisoner? Your children shall be kings. You shall be king. And Thane of Cotter too. Went it not so? To the self-same tune and words. Who's here? Enter Ross and Angus. The king hath happily received, Macbeth, the news of thy success. And when he reads thy personal venture in the rebels' fight, his wonders and his praises do contend which should be thine or his. Silenced with that, in viewing o'er the rest of the self-same day, he finds thee in the stout Norwayan ranks, nothing afeard of what thyself didst make, strange images of death. As thick as hail came post with post, and every one did bear thy praises in his kingdom's great defence, and poured them down before him. We are sent to give thee from our royal master thanks, only to herald thee into his sight, not pay thee. And, for an earnest of a greater honour, 
he bade me from him call thee Thane of Cawdor, in which addition hail, most worthy Thane, for it is thine. What? Can the devil speak true? The Thane of Cawdor lives. Why do you dress me in borrowed robes? Who was the Thane lives yet. But under heavy judgment bears that life, which he deserves to lose, whether he was combined with those of Norway, or did line the rebel with hidden help and vantage, or that with both he laboured in his country's wreck, I know not, but treason's capital, confessed and proved, have overthrown him. Aside. Glamus and Thane of Cawdor, the greatest is behind. To Ross and Angus. Thanks for your pains. To Banquo. Do you not hope your children shall be kings, when those that gave the Thane of Cawdor to me promised no less to them? That trusted home might yet enkindle you unto the crown, besides the Thane of Cawdor. But tis strange, and oftentimes to win us to our harm, the instruments of darkness tell us truths, win us with honest trifles, to betray us in deepest consequence. Cousins, a word, I pray you. Aside. Two truths are told, as happy prologues to the swelling act of the imperial theme. I thank you, gentlemen. Aside. This supernatural soliciting cannot be ill, cannot be good. If ill, why hath it given me earnest of success, commencing in a truth? I am Thane of Cawdor. If good, why do I yield to that suggestion whose horrid image doth unfix my hair and make my seated heart knock at my ribs against the use of nature? Present fears are less than horrible imaginings. My thought— whose murder yet is but fantastical, shakes so my single state of man that function is smothered in surmise, and nothing is but what is not. Look how our partner's rapt. Aside. If chance will have me king, why, chance may crown me without my stir. New horrors come upon him like our strange garments, cleave not to their mould but with the aid of use. Aside. Come what come may. Time and the hour runs through the roughest day. Worthy Macbeth, we stay upon your leisure. Give me your favour. My dull brain was wrought with things forgotten. Kind gentlemen, your pains are registered where every day I turn the leaf to read them. Let us toward the king. Think upon what hath chanced, and at more time, the interim having weighed it, let us speak our free hearts each to other. Very gladly. Till then, enough. Come, friends. Exeunt.